Welcome to the final FRC Top 25 for Charge Up. We have another fantastic list of all teams that were eligible during the competition season. We actually got tabulated all the way up to number 100, which we'll be posting after the show as well, too. Of course, we'll be talking about our uh, snubs as well. We'll be debuting clips of the week, and we have an awesome giveaway from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. Let's get ready for the final FRC Top 25 of Charge Up. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. If you're attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Welcome to the final FRC Top 25 for the Charge Up season. We're so delighted to have you here for First Updates Now. I'm Tyler Olds. I'm Ari McMahon. I'm Ryan Swanson. And I'm Justin Montoys. So before we get to the big news uh, of the team update today, uh, just sort of recap. Or <laughs> See, somebody's editing mid. mid, mid uh, do you want to talk about the, the update or do you want to talk about Let's talk about the update. Let's get the update right now. All right, we just get, get right into it. Wait, um, what update? There's yeah, an right? update? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know Ryan has some uh, passionate feelings. I don't know if you want to be put on the spot to go first. Um, oh yeah, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Very strongly that this is a terrible move by first. I hate it. Uh, I'm totally not biased because my team is way better in autonomous than they are in teleop. Uh, that has nothing to do with my opinion whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think uh, talking for real, I do think this should have been, Something that first saw coming week two, week three of the competition season, there was speculation online that, you know, this would be a problem, that teams would fill the grids consistently, that the narrow margins uh, with matches would be decided by penalties. Nobody wants to see that on an Einstein level playing field. I think this was predictable. It could have happened a month ago. The fact that we've just got a week notice, I, I'm pretty upset about it. I think that's fair. I mean, for, mm -hmm. you know, for us in the Northeast, you know, I'm leaving to go, I'm leaving to go to Houston on, on Friday, Friday night, we're leaving. So like we have, you know, arguably no time at all to really adapt or um, do anything too different. So I think that, I think this update and people could disagree. I think it could have been done better. Uh, I would have liked to have seen maybe hybrid only um, supercharged nodes. Um, Cause there are some, you know, some valid arguments to be made for, um, double scoring and on other nodes. Um, so I think that hybrid only may, may have been um, a slightly better solution than supercharge everywhere. Um, and then again, I, I agree with Ryan that the timing is just wrong. Um, I think that there's, there could have been, there was a couple, somebody on chief said there was a couple updates. Um, like we were joking pre-show that had nothing, right. There were just no updates. So I think a little bit of a heads up, maybe if it wasn't full, fl fully, you know, fleshed out what the, what their plan was, but like just giving teams like, Hey, after district champs, we're going to review where we're at with the game. Um, and we, you know, we do plan on making some changes, maybe even listing them. Like these are the, these are what we, we are considering something like that. Just so it's not like every literally most of the people I talked to, like, is this like, is this for real? Is this a joke? Like it was just so out of left field that it didn't seem real. So a little heads up, I think would have, uh, would have been called for as well, but Ari, what do you think? Yeah, I would have loved to have this pre district champs. I think uh, the level that we saw at District Champs where teams were getting the ranking point um, almost every match, so much so that it messed up a little bit of our seating. Um, definitely would have liked the ranking point increase before that. Uh, but also just knowing this, like you said, our robot is in a crate. It has been in a crate since yeah. Monday. We sent it out. We don't have access to it. But um, I personally love this update. I think that it helps to level the playing field from um, an autonomous game to a teleop game where we really should have been all season. Um, as a team who is better than at teleop than autonomous and doesn't really have the resources to do uh, phenomenal autonomous, uh, I think this definitely um, benefits 
a lot of the teams that you know would be stand out if not for we only score one piece of on this so uh very excited to see this play out at the championship level uh definitely going to be some very exciting matches uh some of them qualification matches and definitely into the playoff rounds i should clarify that my frustration is with the supercharged nodes uh, i think the ranking point threshold being increased is a really good thing i think that'll help oh, yeah, that's fine. Teams. i think we knew that was coming though i mean i i think we uh, nobody knew it was coming they, they could have made changes last year they didn't do that yeah, yeah but I mean, we've the, seen the thing, there's a there's a precedent set for that like they've increased it in 2016 they increased it in 2017 uh, in 2016, I think we knew. they had a, a statement in the manual saying they reserve the right to increase the threshold. They had no language oh. like that in the manual this year. First reserves the right to change whoever the hell they want, though, right? They, they like, can do what they yeah. want. Yeah. That's... Uh, so a couple things real quick. Poll just came through. Uh, 79% of our voters love it, by the way, uh, on there. A uh, couple quick things on my end. Uh, as somebody who's not with the team, as a spectator, I love this change. I think having the opportunity to go past full grid, I think is a great call uh, for something like that. However, I definitely understand the frustrations if I was with the team, especially if I built my robot a certain way and or my robots in a crate already. A uh, couple other things as well. Uh, I kind of wish we would have been able to see some sort of uh, multi-balance auto. I was kind of hoping for that uh, to come through. I think that would have been super exciting uh, to have. Uh, I, I like the threshold increase. I think we all in agreement on that. Uh, the, the double thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fine. Um, I, here's an interesting question I had that I saw somebody asking. I didn't quite see the answer to, can you score double first and then fill your node and then have it still count as a supercharged or do you have yeah, to have a yeah. full node first? It needs to be a filled grid. And so as long as it's a filled grid, it doesn't matter. We're going to see like teams scores skyrocket as soon as they hit the full grid. Because you might be placing those doubles, and that that score is going to take off. Yeah, that, that's what my question was going to be: is if you you know miss game pieces, whatever. If you have doubles like in situ, and then you finish your grid, do do all those points automatically get added? I also yeah, don't I think know. so. Yeah, like, it doesn't matter the, when it's scored. No, it's the uh, end the state of the to... match is when you get the the scoring. Right. So when, how it sits three seconds after the end, I think that is what it is. What's also interesting is that I saw, like, I took a, a look at the, the scoring tablets because um, some of the events were at the queuing was, like, right next to the field. So I was, like, watching the scorers put in, and I don't see how the FMS or the scoring tablets is set up to handle this. So one of my concerns is that either they made changes to that, um, which in my opinion is unlikely, um, <laughs> or they're going to add it all up after the match. Like, they're going like to manually. manual? Yeah. Yeah, which I think yeah. is going to be kind of a bummer. Um I don't know how difficult or um, kind of nimble this, the FMS is to change those ref tablets. Um, but just from what I saw, it didn't seem like there was an easy way to all of a sudden start double, you know, supercharging up these nodes. So I hope that there's not like a manual scoring situation and there's going to be long delays um, as those get added. But I also Maybe think double cones uh... are going to be hard to see. It's hard to see a double cone sometimes. Yes. From the scoring, Maybe that's why uh, we got the language of um, teams can't, uh, go and take off other um, people's scored game pieces after the match. Yeah, like that was added in like afterwards. So, all right. Well, hopefully I think, they're not connected. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think overall, I I don't know how much more we can exhaust this discussion without having a full show about it. Uh, but a very interesting change. Uh, <laughs> j just like a, uh, a, from us, real quick, a general thumbs up, thumbs down on things. So. Uh, supercharged grids, thumbs up or thumbs down, or nodes, I should say. Okay, uh, I think we're all in agreement with the uh, event or the uh, increased uh, uh, threshold for links. Okay, um, and then from changes wise, would we be way more okay with this change if we would have heard about something potentially coming at least with a greater advance notice? It's a double thumbs up. Okay. I like, let me clarify. I like the change. It's better yeah. for the game. It just needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Should have happened on kickoff, but it should have happened week two of, of competition season. 
Yeah, and well, if yeah. it was going to happen later, it needed to happen last week before district. Well, that's not saying where's that where's that threshold that like I I can already hear like first you know some people at HQ watching this being like no matter what we do we're not going to make these people happy right so like that is what also would true. what would have made you happy at what threshold or what point would you all have been happy as people who are on teams who are quite competitive at championships where is that threshold for you what's the last second they could have posted it where you wouldn't have been pissed off the so pre-district championship would have been fine with me i'm actually so i'm actually fine if, again so you're talking about posting it pre-district champs but still not doing it until champs yeah, you want to yeah. see the champs yeah. at the I, district yeah. champs yep i would have been good with, I, I would be good either way they could have implemented okay. it at mm-hmm. D, D champ. i'm not in a district i'm from minnesota so that doesn't bother me but <laughs> yeah. uh if they would have posted it then implemented it at champs i would have been totally good with that yeah i agree all right, well, let's move on. Uh, great discussion. And, uh, of course, chat, we'd love to see more of your comments on how you're feeling about the uh, championship changes as well, too. Um, and, a, and it could set a precedent for the uh, for future years as well, so keep that in mind uh, as we go through on this. So uh, before we get to the top 25, if you haven't been joining us for quite a while, welcome anybody who is new to the FRC Top 25. This is a community-voted poll. We had over 800 votes come in uh, this time, most, wow. of them, most of them valid. Uh, so, <laughs> so always remind, please follow the rules. Uh, but as we go through uh, on this as well, you're going to see what the community ranking is, which is 100% what this ranking is based on. Uh, but then we will have some additional stats uh, from our friends at stopotics.io uh, using the expected points average or EPA rankings as well, too. They don't impact the stats, just a few more stat points uh, for you. I know I'm pretty sure we talked about how this is starting to maybe diverge off of what optimal EPA looks like or something, but uh, still an interesting stat to have on screen as well. Oh, big thing as well, too. I don't have the picture set. I'll put it up a little bit later. Uh, four teams uh, that are in the FRC Top 25 and FTC as well, we are going to have special FRC Top 25 stickers for you that we will be dropping off at your pit. Uh, so uh, myself and, and probably uh, Angel or Tasi for a couple others of us uh, will be at your pits to drop those off on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so just be aware of that you're not required to put on your robot. We'd love to have you do that if you do, but we're not going to ever like pressure you to be like, you know, this is our spot or something like that. But if you want to represent, uh, do that. They are very uh, coolly. I, can, I need to bring it up right now. So uh, it's a really cool theme. So I really want to bring it up because it looks really cool. If you didn't see in our on our discord, uh, we announced it on there. Let me stop stalling here and just bring it up. This will be a lot easier. So, all right, I'll put it on. Do I get it? Yes. Okay. Except it's huge. Ah, uh, there we go. Let's put it on screen. There we go. Cool. Uh, so this is what the uh, stickers will look like. Thanks a lot to uh, Sapphire Thunder for designing these. Uh, you can go check out uh, stickers like this at firstupdatesnow.com slash stickers. But all the FRC Top 25 teams will get a uh, pretty cool sticker like this. So uh, look forward to that. And uh, can't wait to get into the uh, FRC Top 25. I can't believe it's the final one already. I know. Like Sad Panda, right? All right, so let's jump into uh, number 25. Who's taking this one? All right, I got it. So from Kalamazoo, Michigan and Kalamazoo County 4-H, we have team 2767 Strike Force. With an overall record of 43-11, and 11, they were winners of the Lakeview Number 2 District event way back in, in, back in week one. They would finish third overall at the St. Joe's event, be selected to the number one alliance, but would fall just short in the finals match three, to the third ranked alliance. This week, Strike Force would take the number three seed on the active field at the FIM champ- District Championship with an average ranking point score of 3.41. 2767 has an impressive three piece autonomous that they consistently run in the playoffs. They also managed to fill a grid along with one of the most stacked qual matches I've ever seen, uh, was then 33 and 67 altogether. Uh, they went on to lose in the finals on Aptiv despite scoring 179 points with a full grid, just barely coming up short on hip- hitting the triple balance. 2767 will be a top contender on any champs field, and they should be in a great position to avenge their performance at district championships. Yeah, what a what a uh, sad defeat. Uh for uh, strike force and and comments as well to their alliance partner who we just posted a, a btp for today uh they had that match right like in it yeah. i've been there before i've lost on triple balances uh, i've lost a division on triple balances it sucks uh so but this is definitely a team uh that's going to be uh definitely a, a, a contender lock in their division and, and looking forward to seeing they've, they've just kept improving throughout the entire year 
Tower, that uh, the video from 2012 of that triple balance is like the thumbnail I always see on my YouTube. <laughs> what, wonderful. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like, oh, I always feel so bad. That was a, it, that was an insane match, though. I remember it, it vividly. All right. Jumping into number 24 from Waterloo, Ontario, we have Team Dave. Winners of the University of Waterloo District event. They went 11 and 1 to rank second at the at the uh, end of qual matches. Dave continued their success on the technology division of the Ontario District Championships. They were picked first overall after presumably a silent decline by 2056. 3683 teamed up with team 4476 and they made it all the way to finals uh, going undefeated on the upper side of the bracket. In finals they ran into OP and they lost in two matches. Uh, Team Dave has really, really effective intake. They run fast cycles. They're going to be a scary matchup for whatever field they end up on at championships. Uh, for me, I look at them and I see an early first round pick uh, at champs with a ton of upside. Um, they definitely have the potential to get out of their division. Uh, very, very fun team to watch. Yeah, I agree. They're definitely fun to watch. I think, uh, seeing how they've played this season and watching them play. They're, they're one of the few teams that I actually like when they come into the retrieval zone and they're uh, picking up from the floor instead of actually going to one of the stations. And they're, they're very quick at it. So I respect Definitely. that a lot. All right. Jumping in now to number 23 from Standish, Maryland and Bonnie Eagle High School. We have Team Burt. Uh, team 133 with an overall record of 42, 11, and 2. 133 captained the second alliance to victory in the Meyer division at the yeah. New England District Championship. How do I say it? Mayor. Mayor. I'm bad with words. This is no. <laughs> all right. We all, we all practiced at any chance, so it's okay. Okay. Mayor. Uh, anyway, way back in week one, Bert took the number one seat at the North Shore event, but came up just short, losing in finals match three by only four points. They would finish second and be selected number one by 63-29 at their second event, where they would go on to win in dominant fashion. Bert's swerve helps them run efficient cycles through defense. I really love how the upper part of their robot uh, leans in to score. Uh, congrats to Team 133. And, you know, in, in some of the more tragic news that I've heard, 133 will unfortunately not be attending the World Championship, where they certainly would have been a threat to win their division. Uh, even still, I want to congratulate the team. Amazing season. Uh, really, you should be truly proud of yourselves. You built an incredible robot. Yeah, and 133, uh, have a rep uh, reach out to me. We'll, we will be more than delighted to mail you uh, your number 23 sticker, and congratulations for the uh, 23rd spot. Yeah, 133 was inner division, the mayor division. Um, arguably one of the best robots on this division. I know we talked about them at the 25th spot a few weeks ago, and we said they were a little high, but they stepped up to the plate. Uh, their cycles were so snippy quick, and they knew exactly what they were doing. They had some of the most consistent autos in the division. Even with our, our floor being tiles and dirt, they still were incredibly consistent. Um, the average seven cycles, max of nine, uh, worth an average of 47 points a match. Uh, so it is very tragic that they are not going to champs because uh, that robot is just so, so good. Uh, congrats, 133. All right. Jumping into number 22. Tyler, I'm going to need your help on this one. So what time is it? <laughs> it's, well, it's 9.30. 9.30. It's not quite 9.30. It's 7.23. But at, at number 22, we have team 9.30 from McGuanago, Wisconsin. That's pretty close. McGuanago, but yeah. McGuanago. Yeah. I'm from Minnesota. Yeah, we that's, that's, accept guys. that's acceptable. You have some weird, good. weird city names. Uh, I'm not even going to try in the high school because Tyler embarrassed me. Uh, but Team 930 had a 37-8-1 overall record on the season. 930 won the Midwest Regional and just this past week won the Greater Pittsburgh Regional. Uh, 930 dominated Pittsburgh. Their robot features a three-piece auto. They went undefeated with one tie uh, on, on their way to their second blue banner of the season. They can quickly load from the single substation, and a quick combination of their wrist and elevator uh, enables really efficient scoring. They have a great set of drivers. They use their swerve drive to perfection. To get around defense, they float through the middle of the field, the unprotected part of the field, from the loading station to the community. 
930 is really another team that they're almost locked into being a first round pick at champs if they don't break. Uh, and it wouldn't shock me at all if they make it out of their division uh, onto their second run of Einstein in their team history. They're, they're a threat, uh, especially with their auto. Uh, I think they're going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, I think the big difference, you know, this year versus their 2019 run is that they, you know, they were picked up, I think, like by the fifth or sixth seed or something like that back then. I think, yeah, they're, they're definitely going to be, if not a, a top alliance captain or very close to that, they're definitely going to be a very high pick uh, this year. So I, I think 930 has definitely stepped it up a notch uh, from their 2019 run where they were world finalists as well, too, and uh, definitely the best team for Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, pretty, not, I, I can't say the Midwest because there's definitely a couple other fantastic teams there, but uh, which they've won with as well. But 930 just looks absolutely phenomenal this year. And uh, big kudos to uh, all the people that I do know on that team. Big shout to you for, for a great robot this year. Congrats. All right. Jumping into number 21, another city name that I'm probably going to butcher, Binyamina, Israel. Uh, we have team 1690, Orbit, with an overall record of 39, 10, and 1. They were winners of ISR number one district event and the ISR district championship. Way back in week one, Orbit crushed through their event. They took the number one seed and just absolutely overwhelmed teams. Uh, they came out of the gate roaring. Uh, then at Israel number three, they didn't quite see that level of success. They lost out in semis when the uh, the top robots on that uh, competition kind of got split up. Uh, but and they lost to a really well balanced alliance of sixty three or sixty seven thirty eight, forty five ninety, and thirty sixty five. Uh, just tough tough break at ISR number three, but they bounced back at the Israel District Championship in Jerusalem. Uh, we saw them battle it out with the best in Israel. They finished third overall with a ranking score average of 3.27, and they were selected number one overall by Steampunk 1577. And with the help of 5135, they would just absolutely outplay all the other alliances, putting up no less than 169 points in any of their playoff matches. And if you remember back to week four, uh, 169 points was really, really a, a good score back then. Um, so their final two playoff or finals matches were scores of 169 to 163 and 171 to 169. So they were playing some really close matches and it was kind of a preview for what we saw uh, by other competitions later in the season. 1690s cube shooting ability, I believe will get way more valuable with this new rule change. Uh, and they have a really good opportunity to get uh, to score some supercharged low cubes if they can partner with strong alliance partners and fill a grid. Yeah, yeah I think that last one is going to be really important. That uh, the fact that they can shoot at those low nodes and get the supercharged cubes. Um, I know that Chad is saying it. I know we talked about it a bit earlier. They are a little high for me, um, but that is mainly because the last time we saw them compete is week four. Um, so I think that, I mean, their orbit, they're going to get better. So hopefully we'll see that at chance. Yeah. I'm kind of a, I'm a little indifferent on this because it's very hard to bet against orbit on things going into the championships <laughs> where, you know, this is a team that, that has worked on improvement. Now I will say, you know, we, we talked about this earlier, right. With the, with the big changes. Yes. Does that benefit their team? Yes. However, the robot's been in a crate for the last two weeks. Uh, as well, and I know they have a second one to do make changes with at home, but that's still going to be difficult to implement. I think you know to its fullest extent to really try to get everything you want to change for championships when your robot's been in a crate for a couple weeks. I think it's a little tough. Um, however, uh, you know orbit wise, you know I think you know them as mentioned not compete week four. I think people look at their EPA as like, oh, is your EPA too low or anything like that? Uh, I think you might be misjudging that just a little bit uh, on there. Uh, so for me, I'm okay with them at the 21 spot. Uh, could they be? In a, in a lower spot, sure. Could they be higher? Mm, I don't think so, but this would be kind of my, my max range where I would put them personally. Yeah, <clears throat> agree. I think with that, let's move into our top 20 of the top 25. Out of Greenville, Texas and Greenville High School, it's the Robo Wranglers. With a record of 35, 19, and 0, they are 10th in the first in Texas district, finalists at Fort Worth and Amarillo, and semi-finalists in their division at district champs this weekend. After fighting some consistency issues with their collector this season, 148 has finally wrangled their robot into form and came out of the gate swinging this weekend at first in Texas champs 
only to be faced with a gauntlet of qualification matches that had them play against most of the top teams at the event. Despite seeding outside the top eight, they were the first pick of the second seed alliance and semifinalists. 148 will continue to improve in this one and a half week break before champs, practicing their driving, auto modes, and getting them to world class level. They're currently 47th in terms of EPA on our list. I think they're a bit high at 20, but they're also one of the few teams on this list that has not hit their ceiling yet. So congrats on your season so far, and good luck over this next week and the championship, Team 148. I mean, this is kind of a broken record thing, right? With 16, this is kind of the same thing with 1690, a little bit, in my opinion, where uh, do I want to bet against Rebel Wranglers? No, not really. No. Uh, but this is also probably top of range where I would put them as well, too, um, for, for it. Um, mm -hmm. So do they have opportunities to keep getting better and better? Absolutely. Uh, but it's, you know, they're a, a great team. And do I expect them to keep improving at championships? Yeah, I do. Yeah, like Chet said, I think the intake help the intake change helped a lot, and yeah. they're still getting used to it. And I can't wait to see them compete more. So let's move up to a different Texas team, out of Austin, Texas, and Westlake High School. It's Team Two Four Six Eight Nineteenth Ranked Appreciate, with an overall record of forty five five and three, and undefeated through the San Antonio District. Twenty Four Sixty Eight was the winner of the first in Texas Dallas and San Antonio winners. At their district at divi their division at districts and finalists on the final field they're third in the first in texas district their game their gameplay style favors cubes and oriented cones from the ground and they either place high or they throw in the hybrids late game i think that's going to also benefit them and get some supercharged nodes in the last few seconds of the match their auto places a cone in a cube before balancing if they run from the side, and they're actually one of the only teams with a consistent center auto, which they use for two game pieces and then they engage. Their tele game is one of the cleanest I've seen from the floor. They pull from all over the field while avoiding fouls from restricted zones. Congrats on the event win, and hope you're as appreciated on your division as you have been all season, Team 2468. I love team appreciate. Uh, yeah, I, I feel pretty good about 19 for a spot for them. I think that's an, an appropriate rank spot uh, for 2468, who, who had a great run. Uh, it was cool to also see, by the way, shout out to Team Apprentice, uh, who also made it very far as well, too. I thought that was really cool uh to see uh as well so what a what a great program uh they also uh, i don't i don't know if you mentioned sorry but I, they also i believe won uh ei at texas champs uh as well too so congratulations to them uh, on that uh you know i'm sure many of us can say surprise it wasn't uh impact award uh for mm -hmm. this year as well too but still very well deserved uh for an incredible program uh overall who has a, a great robot this year too i'm gonna be honest just when you said that i thought they were a hall of fame team <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, that, that is a little, how they're not how they're not surprising. boggles my mind, but <laughs> yeah, me same. Too. So yeah, that Every is year. surprising. I think another thing too uh, <laughs> is that we've got to put the rankings into context a little bit. We're talking them about them being you know 19th in the world. This is a different ranking than last week. It's not just a weekly ranking. It's all the teams in the entire world. Uh, this ranking would represent being a number two overall pick at their field at champs. So. Which I think is appropriate. I think they've got that that upper end potential. I absolutely point. agree. Well, speaking about upper end potential, uh, out of Windsor Locks, Connecticut, and Windsor Locks High School and Suffield High School, it's Aces High. With a record of 45, 10, and 0, they were finalists at the Waterbury District, winners of Western New England and Wilson Division champs and champions of the New England District Finals. They're currently first in New England, and Aces has built an absolute machine this year that is no gamble to be a top robot in whatever division they end up in. They average 56 points a match from our data, 18 auto points, 7.6 average cycles a match, and uh, I heard that teams had to adjust their scouting data axis for them to fit on their graphs. That's just how good they were at this event. Uh, they were far and above the best team on Wilson. I got to see this robot close up at their first event, and honestly for such a complex machine that looks so beautiful in the field it's very simple and well built so check out our behind the bumpers there it is a very cool robot to see up close and if you have time stop by their pit and ask them a few questions about it congrats 176 for acing your season and good luck at champs in houston
I, I don't have much to say about 176 overall. I think it's a great spot for them. I think they're uh, yep. a, a fantastic robot. I mean, this, this seems to be a, a really good fit, fit for them. And they have, uh, for them, these are these are all teams now that could be very much so Alliance captains on fields. For sure. And a good bounce back for their team in general. They came to FLR a few years ago and definitely weren't at, at this level. Um, and I know they had been in the past. So a nice uh, return to form for 176. Districts has been really good for them. I think in the last few years, they have absolutely taken off and really uh, taken flight to become this team that's so consistently good, uh, especially at the district champs and championship level. And it's really awesome to see uh, a team that's local me that's just performing at that level. It makes us want to do better too. For sure. Yeah. So uh, let's move to an area that maybe has a bit higher of a ceiling than New England. Uh, from Brea, California and Brea Olinda High School, it's Mubotics. With a record of 27-3-1, they were the winners at the Aerospace Valley Regional and semifinalists at the Orange County Regional. This is, without a doubt, 71-57's best season yet. They broke out of the population mean last year, and they're very smart. They've trended upwards. Uh, they really impressed me at their last event, and they are the highest number on here. They've only got room to grow. Um, they have a quick intake that intakes tip cones and cubes from the ground, and then they cycle from the sub single substation for the rest of the match. They've got some really consistent autos, especially on the bump side, which makes them an excellent alliance partner. And they've got smart driving, and they swerve around defense. Um, in addition to that, they would not play a single eliminations round where they would score less than 163. I see some room for improvement in their cycles as well. They do some time dilly dallying and, you know, they, they do that thing where they wave around their robot before they completely place a cone. Um, so I look forward to seeing them break out of the micro region of California and onto the world stage. Very excited to see this team compete at champs. Congratulations, 7157, and good luck at the championship. Whenever I see a, a team number that I don't recognize on a list like this, I have to go watch match footage of them. I, I want to mm -hmm. familiarize myself, see if they're legit. They're legit. They're going to be yeah. a force on whatever field they end up on. Uh, and we keep saying that, but it's true for all these teams. But mm -hmm. yeah, 7157, very impressive. The trajectory that they've been on, they're another yet another California team to watch out for. Yeah, they have this really excellent match footage of uh, where they get a full grid at California, and they have it from their robot's perspective. So you can really tell that they're driving those lines, and it is the same every time. They are so well-practiced and absolutely deserving of the 17th spot. And one of many teams that we also have behind the bumpers for us. If you want to learn uh, mm -hmm. more about Mubotics, go check them out. But, yeah, I totally agree. Mubotics had a good robot last year. I uh, got a chance to talk to them more at Chelsea Champs last year, and it's really cool to see them continuing their success. According to somebody in chat, Aida Pop-Tart says is they have their first blue banner of all time this season as well, too. So uh, congratulations to uh, Mubotics on, uh, on a fantastic year. Yeah, I think I mentioned this last week, but I was like just looking through uh, YouTube and saw an uh, onboard video, like a GoPro video from them, and I had – kind of been unaware of just how good they were so i'm watching this video and i'm like this team's <laughs> kind of cracked like this is they're, they're like so good and then uh so i you know i watched some other videos I was like wow this seems for real and you know a team that i hadn't i had not heard of before um prior to this season so um just a, a statement year from them absolutely so let's move up to our 16 spot from bracewell ontario canada woodland christian high school it's the cyber Cavs. Uh, they were the undefeated winners in 17-0 and 0 overall at the Windsor-Essex District event. They're finalists at Waterloo, winners of the Science Division, and finalists in the final fields of the Ontario District Champs. They are currently ranked third in Ontario. Uh, we've been talking about 4678 all season. Uh, they have a smart autonomous, and they have a well-engineered arm. They have really fast cycle times and a reliable auto that brings them out in front almost every event they've attended this year. They have a thing where they use a flashlight to line up with game pieces and find them at the substation. They specialize in upright cones from the floor and the rest from the single substation. One thing I really enjoy about this robot is how it holds the cones sideways when it's traversing so that it doesn't come dislodged as easily. Their placements are smooth and they climb with partners easily. Unfortunately, uh, like 133 that we talked about earlier, we are not going to see them at champs this year. Uh, they are basically the answer to best teams to decline champs this season. Uh, but congrats are still due to 4678 for their season. 
super impressive run. Definitely something to be proud of. Uh, thank you, CyberCavs. Well, that's sad. I was not aware that CyberCavs was not going. That is, uh, that's really mm -hmm. unfortunate. So, I mean, it's tough. Uh, you know, any, any team that has to travel, especially international, when you yeah. qualify – uh, a week and a half before you have to go. Uh, that's always a very tough thing. But, yeah, that's really sad. We don't get to see them uh, in person at championships. I love their flashlight idea. Yeah. We're, we were totally inspired by that. We stole it. We're doing it for champs. So <laughs> shout out for that. Really appreciate the inspiration. The flashlight's a real throwback. 2016, yeah. right? Right. It, yeah, oh. yeah. 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 And uh, further back, 2014. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I think 148, from my recollection, 140 was the first team I saw that, that utilized that. I'm not sure what year it was, but I was like, oh, that's an interesting idea. I miss the uh, giant pole cams. <laughs> Me too. Oh, <laughs> Especially year. this year where you can't see in front of yourself. Right. Like, what what year was that? Was that 2016 or what year? That was 2015. 2016 because you couldn't see over the Port Cullis. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Teams did it in 2015, though, especially once you got to, like, Champs and IRI and you couldn't see the landfill. Uh, chat, oh, yeah. Somebody in chat says a uh, 2012 flashlight was first by 180, which that sounds right, too, because 180 has been using yeah. flashlights forever. Huh. Interesting. All right. So, uh, Ari, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to start uh, my teams in the 15th spot. I have Team 5940 from Redwood City, California, Design Tech High School. It's bred. 27 and 5 overall, and with winners, the Monterey Bay Regional. So, two events uh, seems like a minority uh, in the top 25 this season, but Bread made an impact in those events uh, they played this season. After a lower bracket finals exit in week two at Central Valley, Bread battled uh, with Madtown at Monterey Bay for the top spot. Madtown got the upper hand, finishing first, just two ranking points ahead, but they would wind up playing together in the playoffs uh, to earn the win. So, 59 40 has an awesome intake for cubes off the ground which is really going to help them with the, the new team update, um, which is also, also is a nice transition into their arm. Uh, they look tuned, tuned up for champs, um, and we'll be keeping an eye out to see what division Bread ends up in in Houston. So good luck to 5940 Team Bread. They had one of my favorite puns of the year last week. They, they move across the field like butter, and they burn defense like toast. Just nice. calling back to that one. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> All right, I was gonna say I, I need. I feel like I need a good like bread pun from you. So thank you. Uh, okay. So well, for... there's yeah, two. They, they were one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about attempting to do one myself, but then I, I like I could already see what your reaction would be to me even attempting one, and I'm just like, mm, no, like I, I had the vision of the future no. for that. So no, nah, I'm good. No, thank you. California <laughs> amazes me, like. 5940 is I don't know what what they are in terms of ranked on California. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but the fact that they're you know, they're a top ranked team, but but they're not even close to number 1 in California. There, yeah. There's so many good teams in California. I just I wish that we could emulate what they're doing out there. Same. Yeah, it's a uh, Silicon Valley and all those tech investors all went out there. Maybe. Imagine for a Maybe. second a California district. Imagine. I mean, Brad <laughs> went to, all four Brad of them? To Einstein last year. Like they're just they're just yeah. such a good team, and like you said, they're not even the top. Uh, at least as far as well, I mean EPA or top twenty five. They're they're supposedly not the top California team. So um, they're they're not. But... Or sorry, Texas team. <laughs> Texas. Texas. No, they're Cal sorry, they're, Cal last year. they're California. Yeah, they're definitely the best team in Texas. <laughs> yeah, hands down. Hands down. <laughs> oh, I, I glanced over their Einstein field last year. That's where I saw that. Fair enough. All right, so moving on uh, to 14 spot. I do have a team that's definitely from Texas. Uh, 66 72 from Irving, Texas. It's Fusion Core. 44 and 11 overall. And we're the winners of the Fort Worth District event and the Apollo Division at the Fit District Championship. So 6672 coming out of Texas and grabbing the top, grabbing a spot in the top 25 is awesome. Uh, the season began with a finalist performance. Uh, then they scooped up their first win week three at Fort Worth. They were the number two seed and partnered with the Robo Chargers uh, and 5613 to earn the win. At Fit Champs, they ranked one in their division. And with 2468 and 3679, were able to win and advance to the Fit Finals. They played two extremely close matches to 118, 3005, and 8576. We came up just a little short. Uh, so this might be a new Texas powerhouse, and they're going to 
look to seed at uh, seed high at their division in Houston as well. So good luck to team 66, 72 fusion core. So we were just talking about, you know, the top teams um, in California where, you know, bread maybe isn't even one of the top teams. And here we have another team that's not even the supposedly the best team in Texas, but uh, certainly a great team in their own right in fusion core. Both bread and uh, fusion core would be the number one team in Minnesota by a mile. <laughs> yeah. right? They'd be a top, they might be one of the top Midwest for sure. One of the top Midwest teams. Um, yeah. But so for me, whenever I watch them, whenever they pick up a cube, I just feel like they're going to drop it. They, Cause they got kind of the, the pinchy <laughs> intake uh, for cubes. It's like, Oh, they're going to drop it. Just hit them. Just hit them. Yeah. Uh, but they never drop it. They've obviously got that thing dialed in. Their intake is really, really good. Uh, they're they're a threat. No matter what division they're in, they're a top top one or two pick, and they could make an Einstein run. Yeah, they look like they'd be really top heavy, right? But I, I going back to we interviewed them week one. I got to see them at Waco, and I, they said they had like thirty plus pounds of ballast on their robot as well. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, makes up for for that. Uh, to, uh, you know, big shout out to a, a team that once again was the third or fourth robot on the World Championship Alliance. And now yep. they've you know, they come by, you know, both from talking to them and I got to talk to uh, uh, not 3015 uh, last week as well at Michigan Champs. And both of them is talking about how much they were able to learn uh, being part of that World Championship Alliance and how much they were able to apply it towards their team uh, as well, too. And both those teams had phenomenal years. Uh, as well too but I mean definitely Fusion Core is an incredible team uh, and it's so cool to see them continue I can't believe they didn't win their first event to be honest with you that, that Waco was just it was just weird um, but going into the rest of the way uh, Fusion Core looks to be a, a absolutely phenomenal uh, robot uh, out there It'd be interesting to see them in uh, more of an alliance captain spot by the way I'd like to see them in command and see what they can do with it yeah, last year they were 50th uh, on Galileo. I don't think that's going to happen again. <laughs> so uh, no, definitely probably not. To see, uh, how they do. All right. So moving on uh, in the 13th spot, I have Team 195 from Southington, Connecticut. Southington High School is the Cyber Knights, 41 and 11 overall, and with winners of the Western New England District event and Hartford District event. So it's been kind of an up-and-down season for 195, uh, but that didn't stop 195 from getting the voter recognition that they deserve. They began their season with back-to-back -back wins at their district events, both as the number two seed, and were selected to the number one alliance both times. They ranked four this past weekend at New England Champs and were finalists on their field, falling just short in two close matches. So it's unfortunate um, I didn't get to see their um, – like, I don't think any of the videos are uploaded to the Blue Alliance um, from New England Champs yet. I don't know if that's true they're, or false. They're, they're not, but uh, yeah, I they're contact no I contacted New England first, and they sent me some raw videos that I was able to parse yeah. out for a recap last night. So on screen right now, we do have uh, one of the finals matches playing. Yeah, so I didn't get to see their matches from this weekend, unfortunately. Um, but prior to district champs, obviously they they've been had been playing really well. Uh, maybe Ari. Uh, um, can come in a little bit as well, but um, no strangers to success at the World Championship 495, and certainly looking like uh, they have a robot to make another strong run as well. Yeah, we played with them, so uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely saw all their matches. Um, uh, I would like to start by saying this has not been an up and down season for 195. This has been uh, an insanely good season for them from the get go. I think they started their first event and they were averaging like six, seven cycles in their first event, which is absolutely nuts. On this division, they were averaging like something crazy, like eight and their max was 10. Um, absolutely beautiful robot, knows what it's doing. Uh, when they come into the double substation, they are literally slamming their robot up against the wall. It's very stressful, but they don't break. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they rock it across the field over to the other side. Um, just amazing robots to watch. They have been one of the top robots in New England from the beginning. Definitely, uh, arguably the best robot in New England. I, I think them and 176 can have a conversation, but, uh, and we will because they're both Connecticut teams, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely phenomenal robot this year, incredible consistency, and definitely going to be a lock on their division, maybe a first pick. Okay, so that kind of answers my question, Ari, because I'm going to say, based on the performance at New England District Champs, uh, are, is 13 an appropriate spot for them or not, in your opinion? It is. Um, I love them, so maybe they're a bit low, <laughs> but uh, definitely best of based on their performance. I'd put them at 10 to 15. All 
Alrighty, um, so that was 195 and 13. Uh, in 12, I have team 1577 from Hamarkaz, Israel. It's Steampunk, 41 and 8 overall. The winners of ISR District Event Number 1 and the Israel District Championship. So began, they began their season undefeated on their way to their uh, first blue banner of the season. They, their second event saw them ranked third, and after some tough matches, they were de defeated in the lower bracket finals. After that, they were on their way to the ISR champs. They bested all of their teams in quals, earning the number one seed, and partnered with Orbit 1690 and 5135. And though they weren't seriously, seriously challenged in the upper bracket, their finals matches were extremely competitive, winning their first match by just six points. So a testament to their ability to win close matches and the increased skill we're seeing overall uh, from teams in Israel. So they are tuned up, hopefully before they put the robot in the crate with the new update, um, ready to go. I think, I don't know if, Tyler was talking about Orbit or uh, Steampunk having a practice bot, but certainly they'll be uh, a force to be reckoned with at Champs, and good luck to 1577 Steampunk. I, I don't know if Steampunk does. I know Orbit usually builds free robots. I don't know if Steampunk does. Actually, I'm inclined to say no. Uh, yeah. I don't think they do, actually. And I could be wrong. Lido or something, if you see this later, let me know, because uh, I'd be interested in that, or I can just you know talk to you once we get the Champs, too. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm i okay with 1577 here. I, uh, I know that, once again, you know it's been a couple weeks since they played. Is there more that this team can do? Yeah, uh, but I still I think 1577 is the best team out of Israel uh, right now, and uh, I think this is a, a good spot for them. Could, you know, Once again, are they maybe my top of range where they are? Yeah, but they're still within, I think, that ballpark for me. I think Ari and I probably agree that 1577 is ranked too high. They, for me, they only have a two piece auto that I'm aware of mm -hmm. that they've ever yeah. shown in competition. Ari mentioned that earlier. Um, at champs, if you want to be recognized as a top 12 team in the world, got to have a three piece auto. Uh, maybe they do, you know, maybe they've got that, you know, figured out back at home and they'll show up and they'll, you know, come out guns a blazing. But I, it's too high, too high for me. And it's tough because they're at a disadvantage having competed last in week four. But, uh, but yeah, 12 is too high for me. It's, it's a fair point to definitely make for that with the two piece auto as well. So I can't, I can't contest that or anything. And the best I can do is have uh, hopes and prayers that they do have <laughs> better than something like hopes that. Right. And, hopes and prayers. I will say uh, I'm not necessarily disagreeing. It's just uh, as a slight counterpoint. Avoiding the recency bias, they haven't played in a long time, and to still be voted here. You know, I, I tried to say pre-show that, you know, Israel does vote, and Tower kind of countered that by saying, you know, the distribution was pretty even. So to beat the recency bias and, you know, and they haven't, haven't not played in a few weeks and still end up 12th is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, and just to confirm, I, I know I haven't been rendering those out recently. Honestly, the only area that was pretty underrepresented was the southeast in voting out of the 800-plus votes that we had. Everywhere else was, was actually pretty even, so it was actually a little surprising to see something like that. Uh, the highest area was, new, was uh, not New England, but the Northeast area. So that includes New England and FMA and things like that as well, too. So those saying that FMA is not on here uh, or hasn't been yet, I, a lot of people from that area, from at least the general Northeast of the United States are voting. Uh, so it is what it is, I guess. Maybe they're just better at everyone else than taking their own bias out of the mix and doing it based on what they think is the top yeah. 25 teams. I, yeah, I also, we are. I also love seeing people in chat like, uh, Fim doesn't vote or somebody. Like, How do you know? You have no clue what the voting representation <laughs> yeah, right? is. So, sorry, man, but you really don't. So. We are all any. I love it. All right. Uh, my last team here is uh, the 11th ranked team, which is 971 from Mountain View, California. Mountain View High School at Spartan Robotics. 25 and 8 overall, and with the winners, the San Francisco Regional. So the year started off with a bang week three, earning the two seed uh, at San Fran and captain their own alliance with their friends 972 and 8016. Um, and with a slight, slight stumble, they were able to come back from the lower bracket and earn the win. A couple weeks later, they hit the field of Monterey. Uh, they earned the three rank and again kept in their order alliance to the finals. This time in the finals, they came up just short, um, falling to 59-40, uh, 13-23, and 69-98 in two matches. The second finals match was really close, only eight points, uh, but un unable to overcome the uh, powerhouse that was um, Madtown and Bread. So 971 has a great robot. Again, another team that has is no stranger to success at the World Championship, and they'll definitely be uh, looking to continue their success this season in Houston. So good luck to Team 971, Spartan Robotics. Best tank drive in the world. <laughs> 3357 would like Comments to Comments, yeah, we'll contest that. 
Uh, I think really the question here is, uh, is this an appropriate rank for 971? Does having tank dilute our thoughts in regards to where 971 should be? Or are there other things that may or may not make you feel that this is a good or not a good spot for 971? No. I mean, they've got enough. They've got enough other degrees of freedom that I feel like we can still evaluate them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have an issue with it. Ranked eleven, I, I have a hard time ranking California teams in general. They're all so good, yeah. Yeah. and you mm-hmm. compare them to each other, and it kind of dilutes it a little bit. But, but yeah, no, I, I don't have any issue with it. That's a really interesting point, right? You compare them to each other, and you're like, oh, maybe they should be higher, or lower. But then you're like, I'm sorry, you compare it to some other regions. These top five California teams would blow them away. I'm sorry, people who want to see certain teams from their regions appear on here. I don't think you're beating some of these teams just to break it to you all. If you're doing truly objective and, and it was all like accurate, who is the best? I don't know that there's not 10 California teams in the top 25. Right. I don't know because I haven't done the math, but <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, that sounds right. Bro. All right. Yeah, I don't know if I can count that high. Don't forget, we will have a championship uh, clips of the week as well. Those will be due by two, by the end of Tuesday after champs. Just give everybody time a, a little bit of time to rest and recover, including uh, myself and everybody else uh, on there. So uh, those will be due by the end of Tuesday. We'll release that uh, on Wednesday uh, for everybody to see. Uh, but before we get into that, we do have to thank our show sponsor today, which is going to be the fantastic people over at SolidWorks. Uh, so SolidWorks has been uh, supporting First Updates now all year now, and we really do appreciate everything they've been doing. Make sure you go check them out, uh, anything they might have at uh, championships and the innovation fair as well, too, and see how SolidWorks could be a great fit for your team Going into the next season, it is used by over uh, 80% of colleges in the United States. That's what's taught on there, and hundreds of thousands of businesses are using SolidWorks as well. So a great consideration for your team. Don't forget that SolidWorks is free for first teams at SolidWorks.com. First, you can get started right now if you want to. And, of course, check out their 3D experience platform if you'd like to uh, dive a bit more into what SolidWorks is uh, and uh, get part of the community at SolidWorks.com. First. All right, breaking into the top 10 of the 2023 uh, FRC Top 25, we have a team that I've covered three times now, and they've ranked 12th, 10th, 10th, and now 10th again. We have the Masters of Consistency from Rochester, Michigan. It's the Robo Jackets with a record of 59, 14, and 1. They were the winners of the Milford and Muskegon district events. 3538 as a wacky robot. I've discussed it here a bunch of times. Um, and like, like I said, how do you go? You're ranked 12th, 10th, 10th, 10th. Uh, very cool. Uh, and holding on to that 10th spot again here as we move into the championship. Uh, like I mentioned, 3538, one of the most consistent robots I've ever seen play this game. Uh, they, they do what they do every match. They do it consistently. They don't break down. Uh, and their attention to detail is really, really good. Uh, they have a fast pivoting arm on an extending angled elevator. They can pick up co- upright cones off the floor, uh, but really they're truly quick in and out on the double substation, uh, as quick as any team in first. And, you know, 3538 proved once again that they're among the best teams in Michigan as the first pick on the Ford division. 3538 would go on to lose a heartbreaker by two points in the third finals match on Ford, but they were undoubtedly the best robot on the field. 3538 will be a favorite to make Einstein no matter what field they end up on on champs. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing that robot in person. Absolutely. They really impressed me this weekend at Michigan. Um, definitely curving upwards and proving that uh, they have not hit their ceiling yet. And I'm very excited to see them. Uh, we have behind the bumpers with them actually that came out this weekend. Uh, very cool robot to see up close. And uh, as PJ said in chat, not that wacky once you understand it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, personally, I'm always a fan of the duct tape on the robot. I think it's the uh, not only a great aesthetic but functional choice amongst uh, Robodax. But, no, I, I have been very high in Robojackets uh, all year. I think they're a phenomenal machine. Um, you know, uh, one thing, though, I don't 
you know, I don't necessarily know if they have that much more to go in regards to their, their upwards way. I don't really know. I didn't think they did either last yeah. week, but I was proven very wrong. So <laughs> I'm not saying that anymore. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. With the performance that they had, uh, you know, here – uh, at MSC, uh, I, I don't really think there's much improvement for them to make. I think they're a top tier team, and uh, is there improvements every team can make? Sure, but I, I think it's pretty hard to find with Robo Jackets. Uh, just a general thought on MSC, real quick. Uh, so we inter- I interviewed eleven teams at MSC. Not a single one made it out of divisions, by the way, which was like the worst, <laughs> the worst like parlay bet ever made in the history of anything. So, uh, but I mean, congratulate, by the way, just a quick congratulations teams that did get, get into divisions. It was super cool. I was, I went to uh, Indiana district champs, uh, but as I was watching that, I also had MSC up on my phone. I was also watching fit as well too, at the same time, got to watch the FMA finals, which are crazy as well. Uh, and a little bit of new England as, as just trying to go back and forth with my phone for things. And like, I mean, the, the divisions were awesome. Finstein is so cool. It's such a great venue uh, overall in choice. I know it depends what side of the arena you're on based on how much seating is kind of like championships a little bit. Uh, but overall, it, it's such a great way. It's the closest we'll ever get to representing what Super Regionals would have been uh, back in that proposal, which unfortunately is almost a decade old now. But uh, it, it's definitely just a cool thing. And, and 3538 is a awesome representative uh, of FIM here in the uh, top 25. Hate to break it to you, Tyler, but that document is 12 years old now. Oh, well. We're getting old, man. Great. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's All right. Uh... Let's let's jump to the number nine ranked team from <laughs> Ventura, California. We have High Tide. Overall, they have a record of 43-7-1, and, and they were the winners of another name I'm going to butcher. Tyler, do it for me. Hwaneme? Hwaneme. 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 Hermione, yeah, sure. something like that. <laughs> that port regional, uh, Ventura, and Aerospace regional. So triple banner for them. One of the best teams in the world. Uh, they continued their winning ways at the Aerospace regional in week five. They went 15-2 and two there. They also picked up the Excellence in Engineering Award. Uh, High Tide is among the fastest cyclers you'll watch in this game. They zoom back and forth across the field. Uh, they were able to finish off their event in week five by finishing a grid. Uh, and I expect to see a lot more filled grids by them and a lot of supercharged game objects. They're one that when this rule came out, I thought of them, I'm thinking they're going to benefit from this very heavily. Mm-hmm. And that'll probably be true for the rest of the teams on the list here. 44-14 is one of the, the teams that stands to benefit massively. Their fast and efficient cycles make them extremely likely to fill the grid repeatedly. Uh, they'll probably do it a few times in quals and in playoffs. I expect them to do it every time. Uh, they're going to, they're going to be really good at champs. I fully expect them to make their second straight appearance on Einstein. No argument from me. I think you're dead yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, check another box for the California teams that are just consistently world-class top tier. <laughs> no, I'm sure that's the last California team on the list, right? Oh, definitely. I don't think there are yes. any more. Yes, we've only got Texas teams left, All right. yep. including Brett. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So the pride of the Midwest from Arlington Heights, Illinois, Buffalo Grove, Elk Grove, John Hersey, Prospect, Rolling Meadows, Prospect Heights, and Wheeling High Schools. It is your Hall of Fame team, Wild Stang, coming in with a 29-2 overall record. They were the winners of the Midwest and Seven Rivers Regionals. Wild Stang was off in week six, but in week five, they hit the field uh, running. They picked up right where they left off and they earned an impressive 36 ranking points. They beat a bunch of other teams that were just behind them at 35 ranking points. Uh, They teamed up with teams 23-38, 55-86, and uh, at that event, Wild Sting earned their second blue banner of the season. In the finals, they were only one game piece short of a full grid twice. Uh, This Wild Sting team really throws back to the Wild Sting teams of old that were just dominant, and I think this team might be as good or better than any of those old wild staying teams. They have a real shot to make noise at champs. They're another team that I would be more surprised than not if they, if they miss Einstein, I really truly think they're going to be there. I'm more surprised uh, with, with wild saying that like they're, they're a hall of fame team, but they're eligible for impact again. How does a team like this who literally every event I go to, I see multiple teams with this team's intake did not win either engine inspiration or impact award this year. 
uh, because they have had a tremendous impact uh, in the FRC community uh, this year. It is just so obvious watching uh, events and just seeing how many teams are utilizing uh, some version of their intake, including many top tier teams are using as well or, or drawing some inspiration from it. So congratulations to them. I think eight's a great spot uh, for Wild Sing and a, a phenomenal year this year. And shout out to all my friends on Wild Sing and Plus One uh, who are uh, very well deserved that this robot absolutely is sweet. Yeah, Tower, we could do a whole show on my issues with FRC judging. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, in yeah. regard to impact, it, it's possible they're not submitting. And as a former Hall of Fame that team, is possible. I, you know, I, I think that's pretty common for the, those teams to withhold from submitting. But uh, some like 359 won impact uh, this year as well. So I, I know that's a single case scenario, but I, there are teams that are doing it. For sure. I mean, All right. The robot, though. Hold on one second. Yeah, <laughs> um, they were one game piece short of a full grid in week five. They had an off week this week, and I think that's really important to note because uh, we're still talking about them in the eight spot, and they've had this week and a half to practice. Uh, they had they didn't have to ship their robot off to Houston already, so um, they are only going to get better from what they debuted there, and I'm very excited to see it. Yeah, totally agree. They'll have a three-piece auto. Wouldn't shock me if they have a three-piece bump side auto, which doesn't mean that much anymore. Thanks first. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, they're going to be really, really good at champs. So moving on to our seventh ranked team out of Texas uh, from Houston, Clear Creek, Clear Creek Independent uh, School District. We have team 118, the Robonauts. Uh, I think they've probably played more matches than any other team in first. Their overall record is 77 and 13. Wow. Uh, 118 is amongst the winningest teams in FRC this year, not just in number of matches, but they have not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six blue banners already this season <laughs> with the opportunity to win more. An insane accomplishment. They could tie 11-14's record, I believe. Um, in their fifth event of the season, the Texas District Championship, uh, on the Mercury field, 118 ranked first and won the right to draft 3,005. Uh, once they formed their playoff alliance, it was pretty close to over. Uh, the alliance would go undefeated through the Mercury playoffs, and they won both matches against the winner of the Apollo field. They filled the grid four times on their march through the playoffs, and they came up just short on a number of other occasions. Their dominant alliance maybe had something to do with the rule update going into champs. Filling grids that consistently was very, very impressive. Uh, 118 has not won a division since 2017. I think that could change this year. They'll be among among the favorites on their field. Um, they, they have a shot to make Einstein. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, EP, I think, is a little deceiving on this. 118 looked really, really good at uh, Texas Champs as well and very well deserving of the number one seed on there. Um, they weren't the, mo the the highest scoring. I think that does go to 3,005 uh, overall uh, on the field. I don't know how they compared to their other division. I was just looking at some stats that were sent to me from their division where I think they were the second highest scoring team on that. Uh, so it's easy, you know, I, I say this, and sometimes I am a big critic of 118. It's easy to, to rag on 118 sometimes because maybe their EPA is too low or, like, you know, they – that everybody expects the the miracle bot to do everything, but they're a very very good team. Um, I I don't know if seven is where I'd place them, but they're still very well deserving of being uh in the top twenty five in the upper half of that in my opinion. And uh, their Texas performance, if you watched it, uh, which I don't know how many people did, uh, was in my opinion a huge improvement in regards to how clean one eighteen looked on the field. Uh, there is still improvements with this team, however, uh, you know some of the other top tiers we talk about. We're, in my opinion, there isn't really much to improve. I think one team still does have a little bit to improve uh, for their cycle times, but I, they're, they're a phenomenal machine this year that earlier I was not a fan of. I've been a much bigger fan the last couple of weeks in 118. Yeah, I, I agree. They're ranked too high, but they are, they're good with room to improve. I, I totally agree. All right. Jumping into number six, a criminally under ranked team, in my opinion. From Madura, California, Madura High School, it's Madtown Robotics. A record of 32-1. and one. Uh, They were the winners of the Central Valley and Monterey Bay Regionals. 13-23 uh, was off in Week 6, but in Week 5, they brought their tuned-up machine to the field at the Monterey Bay Regional. 13-23 uh, averaged 
four RPs. They never missed it. Um, and they were, they barely beat uh, the team below them that had, uh, you know, they just missed two ranking points. So that was a crazy competitive uh, race to the top for that event. Uh, this team just wowed everybody uh, with the only perfect match, the only 193 match of the entire season. Um, and it might be the only 193 match that we see all year in a practice match. But still, uh, they, they sent shockwaves through first. They did it. They executed it. Uh, it was super cool to see. And they continue to be near perfect as the event went on. Uh, 1323, in my opinion, was snubbed. They are definitely a top three team in the world, in my opinion. They're amongst the best. Uh, and I think I think if the Vegas betting odds were to you know put, put odds on them winning their division, they would be a negative betting odds. So which means they would be favored <laughs> against the field to get out of their division. 1323 is going to dominate. The only thing I see getting in their way is either a really stacked division or chaos within the Alliance uh, rankings. I, I know a lot of people in chat saying that 1323 is too low. The interesting thing will be is once we get to our top five, uh, where we would place them because I, I think these the top six here are all – I mean, these are, in my opinion, a rank above – uh, from from where teams are, these are the elite of the elites, and I think it starts off with with Madtown. Um, could they be uh, higher? Does EPA say that they are higher? Yes, uh, on there, but I mean they are one of the best teams in the world, and six out of like what thirty eight hundred ain't too bad either. Or however many teams are in FRC now. Thirty three hundred, I think. There we go. Thank you. Like I said earlier, I can't count above 10, so it's a bit difficult. Fair enough. Hey, just a couple things before we get into our snubs of the week. Uh, by the way, uh, many of us are going to be at championships with their teams. Not all of us, sadly, but many of us uh, will be on there. So make sure you please do come by and say hi. Uh, myself, uh, as well as some other uh, fun people, Tasif and Angel and Samantha uh, and Abbas over in FRC as well. We will be uh, filming uh, both behind the bumpers and behind the bots. Uh, so I myself will be mostly on the FRC side of things. Uh, we are be more than delighted to, to say hi and uh, tell us about your team. Tell us about how you're doing. Uh, we can't get the interviews for everybody. I just want to put that out there. We get well over 100 requests every single year. We also do typically have some teams that will – always want to get for things because we know they're going to be heavy hitters for us. Uh, so I can't guarantee we're going to get to your team for behind the bumpers. Uh, but the best I can say is we'll put you on a list. We'll try our best for things. In reality, we're going to get about 25 done during championships. But regardless of that, please come say hi. And uh, we have uh, awesome stickers. We have some banners. Uh, we are pairing up with the FRC Discord uh, to do a meetup on Thursday at 11 a.m. from 11 to 11.45 a.m. on next Thursday at Championships in uh, room 360 C and F. So it's on the third floor. Uh, we are expected to be over capacity already. Uh, so please uh, get in while you can. Uh, we'll have a lot of different uh, uh, name badge ribbons, not just from fun, but from the FRC Discord. Uh, some other uh, groups as well, too, out there. We also have some giveaways as well, too. Uh, for those who appear, we'll be taking a picture at a couple games, that sort of thing. So we do hope to see if you see any of us, please feel free to stop us and say hi. Let us know uh, who you are, who you're with your team and stuff. Anything you want to tell us about fun, we are here to listen to you. So I can't wait for championships. I look forward to meet uh, so many of you uh, on there as well. With that said, we're going to start our giveaway from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. So Thrifty Bot is giving away a $25 gift card today for the Thrifty Bot Dot com so make sure you go check them out there and if you're interested in winning a big shout out to ryan donio and the team that he's part of uh ryan donio the owner of the thrifty bot tiger dynasty uh who is 50 10 they won the indiana district championship so that's going to be our keyword for today is tiger dynasty type that in chat right now that's your opportunity to win don't worry it's not a chinese restaurant or anything like that that's i'm sorry it, nothing wrong with that but that is what I, that, what I joke with their team with uh but tiger dynasty phenomenal 50 10 uh congratulations to them for the big win at uh the indiana district championships uh very well deserved it was an awesome set of finals against like super duper and that sort of thing uh so congrats to them so type in tiger dynasty give uh tiger dynasty some love in chat and that'll be your opportunity to win. Don't forget, you do need to be following in order to win. And our subscribers get a little bit extra luck as well. 
So I mentioned uh, we did tabulate the top 100. We're going to show you 26 through 50 uh, just because it's going to take forever to get through some of these. Um, however, I may mention where some teams uh, light up as well. But we're going to be uh, showing off our ranks 26 through 50 finals. Uh, but I'd love to just go around the horn and hear uh, what teams uh, do you feel that should have made uh, even the top 50 for things. Because once again, when you have uh, apparently 3,300 teams, it is very difficult to even make in the top 50. So uh, we'll go around the horn. Uh, Justin, if you don't mind, can we start with you? Uh, just love to hear what team you feel uh, should have been ranked up a bit higher or you would like to see in the top 25. So I guess I'll start by just saying I haven't watched a ton of matches. I, you know, Our team competed three weeks uh, out of the competition season, so I'm not um, super up to date on everyone's performance. However, I will say just a few surprises off the top of my head. If I go into the uh, 76 to 100, I'm surprised to see Children of the Swamp at, one, uh, at 79th. They were a team that was in the top 25 early um, and looked really, really good to me. So that was a bit of a surprise. 50, uh, 54 60 strike zone, 83rd overall. 46 13 Barker Redbacks, 84th overall. So those were those were a bit of uh, a bit of surprise um, that they're that they're not there in the top 50. If you look at their EPA, it doesn't say like you know it doesn't stand out. It's like if you look at uh, I don't want to give any away because I know that there's some on this list that other people want to talk about. But I was surprised to see those teams. <laughs> Um, that we definitely talked about early uh, in the top 25 that made the list on weeks they competed um, and and not barely made the list. Like some of them were in the top 15. Uh, I think 179 was in the top 10 at one point. So to see them um, outside of the top 50 was a surprise. All right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, I just want to – what? I said, all right, let's go to you. Oh, yeah, that's me. Um <laughs> I just want to mention that our first FMA team that we have on here is number 48, 5895 Petty Robotics. Uh, that has had an absolutely phenomenal season and just shouting them out because they are uh, our FMA team on here. Um, also, shout out to 1923. I don't know. I haven't found them yet in our uh, list. 64th. 64th. Um, so those are the two FMA teams that I just wanted to shout out for being in the top 100, uh, specifically Petty for being in the top uh 26 through 50. I do think I would have liked to see 63, 28 a bit higher, maybe even edging into that uh, 20 through 25 spot. They were phenomenal over on the Wilson division at any champs this weekend. Um, and just great robot that they've had. And I know they are making improvements for champs. So keep your eye on them. Ryan, how about you, man? Anybody uh, missing on your list? Oh, yeah, there, there are two teams that bother me quite a bit. So I'll start off the first one coming in ranked 78, uh, 6036. Damn it, that was mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was all of ours. Yes, and, and that's yes. the one I purposely avoided saying. <laughs> yeah, me yeah, too. A shame that they're ranked 78. Teams, uh, go go watch match video of them. They're amazing. They, they were a top 25 team. Uh, they should have been on the top 25 for sure. Yeah. Um, Tyler, you can add more if you want, but my other one is uh, Team 581, Blazing Bulldogs. They added a ton of new mentors this year. I think uh, it's a, a, a dang shame that they're not going to be at the World Championship. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a poster child for districts in California. They are there in a district in California. They run into Madtown and, you know, those insane teams. Finding your way to champs in California is very difficult. They are a top 25 team in my book. I think I, I hope that they make it next year. They're a team that is on the rise. We'll be talking about them. Like we talk about 44, 14 citrus 254. I, I think they're going to take the next step next year. All right. So a lot of mine were taken. So one that has come up in my head, how about bison robotics, 695, a team that was looking so good this year. They have, uh, I think three blue banners off the top of my head, four with the Woody Flowers finalists, winners of South Florida, Miami Valley, and Buckeye. Uh, Where did they end up? I don't even think they're on the top 100. So, wow. yeah, I'll, wow. I'll have to look and dig on that wow. one. Uh, I only I only went out to 100 on, on the overall calculation. So, um, yeah, they're a team that uh, top 25. Yeah, they're a newer team to the scene. So I can, I guess I can understand that. I would have really expected to see them in the top 50. Uh, and if they are somewhere in, in this list and I'm just missing it, I apologize. But uh, they're definitely a very well-deserving team of being great. So, uh, you know, there's always going to be a couple areas that, you know, we, we underrepresent like Peace Tree and, and and CHS and stuff like that. I'm sure there's some phenomenal teams from there too. So chat, we 
we always rely on you to hear more about where some of these teams should be in your opinion uh, as well. And we appreciate those uh, who have chimed in uh, to said uh, to say which one. Now, here's the reality. Once again, we're talking 25 or 50 or even 100 out of 3,300 teams on things. Uh, it is a community vote, even though we had 800 plus votes for things, which Honestly, I think is pretty well balanced for what it is. There's always going to be teams that don't make it. So we expect to hear from you on where representation should be. Get more people out voting in future years as well, too. The community has been so awesome, and uh, I know we're just going to keep growing and growing even more. So make sure you tell people about the FRC Top 25. It, obviously, you have been. It's our best. It's our highest vote ever uh, that we had, but we can always go more and more and more. And we'll be posting uh, ranks uh, uh, 100 through 26. I'll post the slides for those. Uh, as we get uh, after the show, I'll post it in our Discord. And I'll try to post it on CD as well, too. But we got five teams left uh, to go through. Uh, phenomenal ones uh, that we're going to be talking about here. All these teams uh, have, <laughs> I think we all expect to be uh, number one seed division winners, that sort of thing like that. Uh, so let's get into our top five of the final FRC top 25 for Charged Up. Out of Dallas, Texas, an Emmett J. Conrad High School, it's the Robo Chargers. With a record of 48-6-0, they were the winners at the Dallas District, the Fort Worth District, and the first pick of the one seed on their division at District Champs, and the winners of the impressive District Divisional Faceoff. Second in the first in Texas District, they've come up just shy of our number one weekly spot, but I like them here and our Champs Countdown at fifth. They've had a phenomenal season, definitely the best robot in Texas this year. Sorry, Bread, you didn't cut it. 3005 came into first in Texas champs as the team to beat, but with a tough schedule, they would end ranked outside the top eight. They start the match with a quick three game piece auto swirling around at the end to get a head start on their cycles. They average eight cycles a match in telly, but they prefer to pick up from the floor of the loading zone, scooping up game pieces before charging back across the field. Robochargers have the fourth highest EPA in the world right now, and for good reason. Will certainly be one of our top contenders at champs and definitely a team to watch. Congrats on the top five finish, 3005, and good luck at Houston. Shout out to 3005. Uh, 3005, that's how you say it, just so everybody knows. Don't want to get added to their so DNA. You got, you got scolded, huh? So. <laughs> in, in case I'm on their field, I just want to make sure we're on good terms. So 3005, amazing job this year. One of my favorite robots to watch. Yeah, uh, and Ryan, you and I both have close connections to that team uh, as well. They have been awesome just to see this entire build season. For I know you and I have gotten to see some uh, inside scoops uh, with this team all the way through, and uh, 3005 is just absolutely phenomenal. I got to see them play in person week one, and you could just tell from there that they were just going to be one of the best teams in the world. And they, you know, last year definitely had a good year, but this is on a whole new level uh, for what they have brought. Uh, so I know uh, you know everybody who's on 3005 uh, should be are, are super proud. We had uh, Marco on yesterday yesterday who's the drive coach at 3005 on frc roundup uh as well too so shout out uh to everybody on 3005 for their efforts this year uh, we are you know one of the things that are cool is that this is one of the teams that we saw after they debuted and played that there were teams that were trying to copy what their intake looked like afterwards because it was so popular and it is so functional as well too so uh what a cool set of finals uh we got to see uh them as well i, I was i got to listen to them more in the sea because i was driving i was driving back from indiana at the time but i watched them when i came back afterwards uh just because they were so electric, despite having an hour and a half delay of uh, a nothing screen and no music, not complaining or anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the first in Texas uh, championships, the finals were, were really cool. Uh, in 3005 is an absolutely incredible team. I'd love to add one more thing to uh, a thing that they do better than any other team in the world uh, is like the feeding strategy. So they'll just kind of hang out in the community and they'll have their alliance partners dump off game objects to them. I've watched them do it more times than any other team that I've watched. And they put up, you know, 14 game objects in a, in a match, including auto. Just the way they execute that strategy is really fun to watch. And they're they're better at it than anybody else I've seen. Yeah, it's because their intake is just so good. I mean, we have a behind the bumpers that goes into detail. I think uh, at their week one event, they were on iteration 11 of it. Yeah. But you can tell that they have put in the effort with that, that – like gives a whole new definition to touch it on it, but uh, fantastic intake. Okay, thank you, 3005. And let's move on to our number four spot. Out of Mill Creek, Washington and Henry M. Jackson High School, it's Jack in the Bot. 
With a record of 65-7-0, they were the first rank and winners at the Glacier Peak District, the Sundome District, the Sammamish District, and above all, the PNW District Champs this past weekend. Whew. 2910's robot is unbelievable this year. It's a perfect mix of expertly packaged pink arm and wide over the bumper touch it own a collector. They started their quest back to the Einstein Field week one this season, where they debuted one of the world's first three scored game piece autos. And they have just kept getting better from there. They debuted at fifth in the weekly top 25, where we had them as a snub, but they absolutely deserve the fourth spot here in our pre-champs roundup. Their robot has inarguably the lowest CG of any robot in this game, maybe any game, uh, launching themselves over the charge station for cycles without batting an eye. There are some teams in the top five here that are here because they're smart and they're smooth, and 2910 does that, but all while going at approximately 200 miles per hour. So looking forward to seeing 2910 take to the world stage this week in Houston. Congrats on your season so far, and good luck. So I think Two quick my, notes on 2910. Uh, first of all, PNW, please fix your camera view. That uh, abomination. <laughs> it, it's it's offensive. But they have an alternate TV. one, but yeah. No, no, no. If it's not on TBA, it doesn't exist. All right. Yeah. So it's it's offensive to everybody. Not related to 2910. Sorry. Uh, 2910. I wouldn't be shocked. They're one of the few robots I think that could pull off a four piece autonomous mode. I wouldn't be shocked yeah. if they pull that out for champs. So just a note for people to, you know, keep an eye on. Them and 3005, I think, are the top contenders for that. I, I think they have time at the end of their auto, which is insane. Um, but yeah, I think I think they could do it. Not also, that they need to now, as you would say, because the game has completely changed and auto is now useless, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, what I would say is 2910 for me is kind of where EPA breaks down. Yep. I, I feel 100%. rank number four feels right, but EPA, I think, has them at like 20th. Yeah. It might be splitting hairs, but I, I, if I had, if it was, if our team was the number one team in all of, of Houston, we could pick any other team at the event. For me, it would be Jack and the Bot. I think they're best suited. You know, you mentioned the, the, the change that first made. I think they're best suited to, to win the world championship. Um, and I'm happy to happy to be proven wrong, I guess, after the fact. But I think that they're uh, I think they're the best robot in the world. Justin, no spoilers. Thirty fifteen and first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one of I, here's I completely agree with you, Ryan. Their their EPA went down from district championships uh, from where it was before. So mm -hmm. I, this is, I agree. I think this is just where EPA breaks. Some of this just kind of goes with strength of schedule a little bit, uh, too, for things versus, you know, some of the California teams we're talking about or some of the Texas teams, uh, as well. So Jack and bots a phenomenal team. It, it it's, I get some people who are like, yeah, I'll take 1323 over them. I, I take either of the damn teams. So like for me, it's it, all these teams are very well deserving of, of where they should be. And, and as somebody who did get to see Jack and Bob in person, uh, they are absolutely phenomenal uh, as they go through. Uh, so we just had a quick technical glitch. So one second, we're just going to bring back uh, everybody on screen and then we'll get that going. But luckily I was talking to myself during that time. So I think we got everybody back. No, nope, maybe not one second, everybody. Sorry. There we go. Now we got everybody back. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm guessing none of the hosts heard what I said uh, during that on there. But I said pretty much the big thing is, is that when you look at the top six, and I know people are saying 1323 over over 2910 or something like that, I take either of the teams. I mean, they're both phenomenal. So for me, I, I don't really know how you how you shuffle these top six necessarily. There's there's maybe one I would put out of the top six. I, I think at six, that's not at six. But all these teams, I think, are phenomenal. There's definitely a tear break after top six or seven. I think there's mm -hmm. a gap between those those groups of teams. Yeah, even with that gap, I think that uh, this year in particular, the drama is going to be in the three spot. I see we've got some predictions going in chat already, but I think I think after this we're gonna know our order. So, without further ado. In the two plus one spot <laughs> out of Stony Creek, Ontario and Orchard Park Secondary School, it's OP Robotics. With a record of 52, five and oh, they were the winners and number one speed at the Newmarket and McMaster District. Winners in their division at District Champs and winners of the Ontario District. 
They are sitting comfortably in first in the Ontario district, and for good reason, because this robot cooks. Out of the gate in week one, Team 2056 comfortably settled into their number one in the world EPA slot, debuting with one of the world's first triple game piece autos. Speaking of EPA, they're currently still the highest in the world, setting at 84.9. When I've talked to other people about 2056 this year, uh, one thing really stands out. They're certainly not the fastest cycler out there, but they are the smartest. Their placements are accurate, and they never miss. Uh, even as we get higher up in these ranks, uh, teams above 2056 miss placements sometimes. It's part of the game. It happens. But OP simply does not. Uh, they are slow and smooth, and smooth is fast. And 2056 is the definition of smooth. I can't wait to see this robot at the championship level. I think that this is 2056's year to take it all. And I know we say that every year, but this time for sure. <laughs> Congrats on a fantastic season, 2056. And best of luck in your division next week at Champs. All right, that was Slick, two plus one. Yeah. Uh, OP is a phenomenal team out there. Uh, I I had a real tough time between two and one for this team. I I I, I mean, it's once again splitting mm -hmm. hairs on three that sort of thing. By the way, shout out the twenty fifty six. I know many of you are watching from a parking lot right now. Uh, so uh, I think they're loading up to go to champ. So uh, I I got a text about it. Um, so but big shout out to twenty fifty six. What a phenomenal robot. What a what a comeback year as well too after last mm -hmm. year where where teams from Canada were on a three week setback and stuff. It wasn't the best year for OP this year. Is a phenomenal year uh, for OP, and the robot absolutely cooks. Now, uh, you know, I think one of the best things too is like uh, Ontario is extremely competitive, so they've had, you know, I think when we look at maybe some teams that are in like that ten to twenty range who haven't quite had maybe some, some of the top tier competition out there. OP has had a lot of really top tier competition to compete against already, so I think that experience is going to be so valuable for them uh, coming to the championships. Uh, and I. Overall, this robot, like you said, Ari, it's just it's so consistent. It's just smooth, a phenomenal driver uh, that they have as well, too. So big shout out uh, to everything that OP brings. Uh, I, sorry, we can't give you the number two or number one, but uh, it, sorry. For those who don't know, it's an inside joke that OP seeds two all the time in this. Uh, so I, I texted Tyler. I'm like, hey, well, you're not number two. but <laughs> They're number one in my heart. There we go. Mine as well. Same. Yeah. Ontario the district this year has just been amazing. I mean, we've already talked about Cyber Cavs and Dave, but uh, they've just really taken off this year. I think that it's been really fun to watch uh, all the Ontario events, not just for 2056, but for the level of play that they've been getting at. And I think that experience will definitely help them. Everybody should go to Statbotics and look at the, the bubble chart because you got like a big cluster of teams and, and that's all the teams in first. And then way up here... That's OP. Yeah. It's, it's comically, <laughs> like, they're so far beyond almost every other team. Uh, it's very fun. They're a fun robot to watch. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward to seeing them at champs. In the two spot, we have a team out of Davis, California, and Davis Senior High School. It's the Citrus Circuits. With a record of 46 3 and 1. They were the winners of the Winey Meatport Regional, the Sacramento Regional, and the Silicon Valley Regional. Storming out of the gate since week one, 1678 made their top 25 debut of the season at number one with an electrifying set of four matches at the Winey Meatport Regional. And for good reason. One of the only teams week one with a consistent bump side auto, they'd show up to Sacramento week four with their machine figured out and ready to go. And go they did. Undefeated 15-0-0 beat the Cheesy Poops in one of their matches, still ranked second, but would be the first pick of the one seat anyway. 1678 has had a phenomenal season of improvements, capping off their performance this last week in Silicon Valley, going 13-1-0 and seeding second with a rank score of 3.66. Their autos are some of the most consistent in the world, and their two-game piece cross-charging station auto is completely unique. Their wide intake allows pickups from anywhere on the field, and their low CG puts up with even the heaviest of defense. Probably their most impressive feature, though, would have to be their body climb. They use this almost every match, and it has helped them guarantee the charge station rank point, uh, and they're sure to round the champs circuit with ease. Congrats on a great season, 1678. Can't wait to see what you bring to your division and beyond at championships. Going for nine in a row, right? Yeah. I, I think we're going to. I don't I, think there's a question about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wouldn't bet against them. Uh, for me, they're they're one of the most inspirational teams in first, beyond being one of the best in first. Mm-hmm. Them talking about their alpha, beta, gamma robot, you know, building process that they did last year. I've I've heard more teams talk about, you know, oh, this is our alpha robot. Oh, this is our beta robot. Uh, that came from them. They inspired uh, me. We changed how you know we built this year. Uh, they're they're the team that I look up to more than any other team. It's just their documentation too. Like they put out so much into the FRC community and especially from a high tier team like them that has been on Einstein for, you know, nine years and counting. Um, I just think that having insight into that as a community has been invaluable for us. If we're going to talk about future Hall of Fame teams, I... I don't know how they didn't win Impact this year. I don't know if they submitted. I don't. They're know not the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I I really think they're a future Hall of Fame team. Yeah. It's like that, like with two, four, six, eight, right? You just kind of assume that they are. Um, right. They're on for so long. Um, but I didn't actually. I, I meant to follow up on this, and I totally forgot to. I thought I saw somebody last week post that they've won twenty three regionals in a row, and if that's the case. If somebody in chat can verify this, because if that's the case, they're on the verge of breaking 2056's uh, streak yeah. there in regards yeah. to wow. uh, how many, because the streak was set at 23, right, for, from mm-hmm. 2056. So yeah. if, somebody, if somebody in chat can can verify that or not, um, and if I'm completely off base, I apologize, but I thought I read something about that on there because that, I mean, what a what cool streak that would be the beat if, if so. I'm sure 2056, you know, they've held that for a long time. What a cool way to pass the mantle on to such a great team, if, if so. Yeah, one of the longest streaks in sports, in anything. Right. Crazy. Anyway, speaking of crazy teams, let's move on to our number one spot of our FRC Top 25 countdown for Charge Up this season out of San Jose, California and Bellarmine College Preparatory. It is Hall of Fame team, the Cheesy Boos. With a record of 27-2-0, they were the one seed and winners at the Sacramento and Silicon Valley Regionals. I don't think any of us should be surprised to find 254 at the number one spot again on our top 25. They are regularly our number one team on the program. I think this year, above all years, it's been more of a toss-up. 254 has won both of their events this season with 1678 by a point differential of at least 10 points in all final matches. But at that point, it gets tough to say who's better than the other one. Uh, 254 starts their matches with either a three-game piece clean or bump side auto, scoring a cone and two cubes. They average 10 cycles a match, and they rely on cones from the double substation and cubes from the ground, whether that be in their retrieval zone or their opponents. They have a very calm disposition on the field. They know their lane. They make in-match decisions look easy. They cap off the match with a bit of engagement defense and a snippy body climb, always opting to get the most out of the last 10 seconds of the match. Despite not having as many matches as other teams on this list, 254 is a force to be reckoned with. Nothing cheesy about it. Congrats on your season so far, and good luck at the Houston Championship, Team 254. There's been a running rule with uh, Team 254. I don't know quite how long, but a mentor for Team 111 was talking about it. And if 254, uh, if their wheels touch carpet on their first scheduled practice match of the season, they win Einstein. So for those of you who are superstitious and read into that, they made their first practice match of the season this year. Uh, So read into that how you will. Uh, I, right. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, <laughs> my sports betting that I will be engaging in for champs. Yes. Uh, already signed. And <laughs> fun to just not condone any sort of uh, sports betting for uh, for robotic stuff, uh, <laughs> unless unless it's pointless fun box. But um, uh, just a general thing, we we talked about this a little bit pre-show uh, for Silicon Valley Regional. Uh, I don't recall who the team that seated third was, but the two fifty four and sixteen seventy eight were tied uh, with another team. And I'm sorry, but it would have been freaking cool if those two teams didn't get together. Uh, like, to have that breakup, I think, actually would have been a lot more entertaining because, uh, you know, you expect them to automatically win that way. And I think it would have been really cool to see one of the two teams 
uh, uh, be a 42-55. Thank you, Chad, on there. So, uh, yeah. Robidors. Robidors. Yeah. Um, so, it would have been really cool to see a breakup of that. Honestly, I, I mean, I know that's – I'm sure they didn't want that to happen or anything, but as, a, as an outside spectator, I was really hoping that was going to happen. Just to see these two giants just compete against each other, I think would have been really cool. And we'll see if they have that opportunity. I mean – the, the odds are they're probably going to face off against each other at Einstein somehow. Um, well, actually, I don't know what the double elimination bracket now, maybe not, but uh, versus like a round robin, I would expect that. So it, it, it's really cool. I mean, both these teams are incredible. Uh, 254, uh, it's always easy to uh, make a meme that they're number one or something, but they are they are an incredible robot. They are a top tier robot again this year and, and just an absolutely insane machine. Yeah, I think what impressed me most was really just the – are so intentional about the line that they're driving, where they're turning, and their placements are just absolutely beautiful. Again, they miss they miss a few times. They're not 2056, but every time they do, it's fine. They just go and they get another one and they place it on there. It's just, oop, just put it on there. So- their robot design makes me feel dumb. Uh, <laughs> it, it usually does. Every speak- year. Yeah, it usually does. But they were talking about it on Chief Delphi. Uh, they designed their, their horizontal elevator. The reason for that was so that they could slam into the double substation at full speed mm-hmm. and their bumpers and their intake would hit simultaneously. So all they got to do is ram into it and they have the, the game object. So yeah, I think RoboJack is do that really too. Dumb. Yeah, a lot of these top teams do that. And it's just it's such a smart design choice, 195. Uh, 7407 all these teams that freak me out when they do that because it's so loud and you think they break something but no it's all intentional it's beautiful so design. before we head out i want to do a quick round table just a really quick one uh and we're going to draw for a giveaway in a second so make sure you type tiger dynasty in chat for a chance to win uh the gift card from our friends at the thrifty bot but uh real quick want to do a round table who would be who is your number one team who would like you know, None of us vote in this stuff, at least I believe so. Uh, there's no restriction against uh, host voting or anything like that, but I don't vote in it. Uh, I'd love to just hear who the number one team is for you. Um, Ari, I think I, I think for you I can guess, but I'd love to hear. Let's start with you, and, and who's your number one team uh, for Charged Up going to championships? Uh, I mean, I've already said it, but 2056. All right, Ryan, how about you? Uh, the best team in the world, in my opinion, 2056 the most likely team to win the world championship 254. All right, Justin, how about you? Wow. Uh, I guess I'll go a different route. I don't want, I did tip my hand a little bit earlier, but I still think Jack in the bot is, is probably um, the most dangerous robot at uh, Houston. So I'm going to give it to 2910. Uh, I'll split the difference. Uh, I think pre champs updates, 2056, a hundred percent new champs updates. I agree with Justin. I really like uh, how that fares for Jack and the bot and, and what we'll see in that. Uh, once again, all the, in my opinion, the, the top six, maybe even seven are all part of this elite tier. Um, so it's hard to pick one over the other, but uh, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go 2056 because that was my opinion coming into this ahead of time. Uh, either way, man, I can't wait to see these teams compete. Same. So congratulations to all of our teams. Uh, once again, if you're in the top 25, you'll be getting a sticker from us. The two teams that aren't going to champs, we'll make sure we'll mail that out to you. Let's draw uh, for a giveaway from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. Uh, once again, for a $25 Thrifty Bot gift card. Thanks a lot uh, to Thrifty Bot for providing that. And I have no clue where, where my screen is for it. So I'm just going to draw for it uh, on there uh, to show off Thrifty Bot. The winner of this is going to be Melon Adi. Uh, congratulations. Uh, please make sure you uh, shoot first updates now message on our Discord uh, or here in Twitch uh, and is a subscriber. So lots of rigged emotes in chat. Clearly rigged it for our subscribers to win. Uh, so congratulations on that. Hey, everybody, uh, uh, real quick, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the FRC Top 25. Uh, I'm delighted that we got the premiere. Some new hosts into this as well, too. Uh, so Ari, Ryan, and also Connor, who made it an appearance, thank you so much for being a phenomenal additions to the FRC Top 25 this year. Uh, and Justin, man, always great to have you back uh, as well as uh, mike and christine as well too uh I, I i love all of you it's it's been a, a great year and thank you so much for everything you all put into it 
Uh, that's going to wrap it up for our final FRC Top 25. Uh, special thanks to everybody who clicked the follow subscribe button the help fund stay loud live and independent we really need your help and it means the world to us that you want to help support us uh, with either uh, some sort of monetary donation or even with a prime sub or just following or even letting people know that fund exists uh, we can't wait to see all of you at championships uh, as well make sure you stop by of course on thursday once again for the uh, fun and frc discord meetup you can get information in both of our discords uh, for that as well too where you can get a chance to meet fun hosts meet people from the frc discord and of course you'll see us all around so that's going to wrap it us up for us on the frc top 25 we wish all the teams best of luck at the world championships and we'll see you then take care everybody good night this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors if your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.